Good morning, good morning. Come on in, come on in. Tommy, good morning. Yes. It's a new day. Bursting with hope. Open your eyes. It's coming. It's coming. Good morning. How you doing, Tommy? Who else is out there in Facebook land? Come on, y'all. Say hi. Say good morning. Hope you got your coffee or tea in hand. It's going to be a good service. I feel it. I prayed right there before. Let's go. Hey, share, share, share. Make sure you guys share as well. It's going to be a good one. Got a little, got some music in the background. This is a new day. Everything bursting with hope. Amen. Tanisha, good morning. It is. It's a new day. Praise the Lord. Got the song in the background going for you guys. Kara, good morning. This is a new day. It's bursting with hope. The old has gone away. Don't let it slip away. Don't let it slip away. Man, I tell you what. You guys got it. You've been sleeping on this song. It's a new day by Danny Goki. They'll probably mute it later on. You know, the live, you guys catching it live right now, so. <laughs> Love hasn't given up on you. Love is making the old things new today and every single day. Come on now. Woo. All right. These people are showing up. Good morning. Everybody got their coffee or their uh, tea? I got tea. Oh, man. All right. Good morning, good morning. It's a new day. Yes, see the hearts coming in. Yes. You ready? I'm ready. Let's see who else is on here. Say good morning. Come on, say good morning, everybody. I got Tommy on here. I got Tanisha. I got Kara on Instagram. Let's go. 8 a.m., 8 a.m. We are live. We are live. Good morning. Let's see. Let's see. Yes. That's Danny Goki, by the way. Shout out to him. What a phenomenal song. All right. <laughs> we turn that off. Well, um, good morning and welcome to everyone. It, let me tell you, it's a, brun a brand new day, as uh, the song was saying. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here with us. Uh, my wife's on here, too. Cool. Awesome. Ernie, good morning on Instagram live. It's a new day and it's bursting with hope, everybody. Hey, if you're brand new, this is your first time with us or you're back. Michelle, what's up? Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. So good to have you on here. Um, good morning, Danny. What's up, Pastor Danny's on here. Cool. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm really excited. Uh, grateful for a new day. Hope you are as well. And like I was mentioning, if it's uh, your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for spending about maybe about an hour of your time with us here at the Well Church, uh, where we believe, you know, our goal is to help people. Our mission is to help people be more like Jesus, do what Jesus did to have the life that he promised that is life to the fullest. Hey, as people are rolling in here, uh, showing up, good morning, good morning. Just wanted to give you a couple announcements. Easter, Easter, everybody. Easter is right around the corner. Uh, and so is spring. Uh, really excited about that. Easter is April 4th. Mark your calendars. I'm excited to give you some good news. We are working right now to bring you a live worship service uh, on Good Friday at 7 p.m. We're going to have worship and prayer. Uh, really excited about that. So that's going to be a live uh, Zoom worship experience with The Well Collective. Uh, who was with us at our two-year anniversary. So we're going to be able to look at each other, you know, worship and praise together. Again, that's on Good Friday, April 2nd. And then I uh, want you guys to invite people, uh, share that link. Uh, we'll be sending you all the information. We're going to uh, mail you a flyer with it, some flyers, so you can invite people to this event, uh, to this worship experience on uh, Sunday, April 4th, uh, as we go through Lent. Hopefully you're enjoying the devotionals that I've been posting as well. Um, you know, just getting us through these 40 days of Lent. Okay, so don't forget, uh, look out in the mail, look out in your emails, uh, information on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, April 2nd, a live worship experience on Zoom. 
And also on Sunday, April 4th for Easter, everybody, we're going to have a, a live service on Zoom as well. Okay. I mean, I, everybody enjoy that. If you enjoy that, write Zoom. If you were on, the, if you enjoy Zoom, I mean, our service that we had for two year, write Zoom in the comments. Come on. Let me see those, those Zoom. I enjoyed Zoom, 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 Zoom. All right. As we continue with our service and these announcements, you know, at this time, I just, you know, listen, I can't thank you enough. Uh, and my wife and I, and you know, uh, all the pastors on staff. Yes, Kara, I see the Zoom. Yeah, come on, Facebook. Let's see those Zooms. If you enjoyed that experience on Zoom, yes. Well, Michelle, we want to have you back. Yes, Tommy, Zoom. Yes, you know, uh, again, Friday, Good Friday, and uh, Easter Sunday. Um, but what's awesome is, you know, we're doing the work of the Lord. You know, we we are using technology. You know, as Things open, reopen, may not open, whatever. You know, uh, we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And um, through this experience, you know, with the pandemic and everything, we've had the opportunity to pivot, to, you know, uh, change strategically and make some investments technologically. And because of that, you know, we've been able to reach people and you guys have invited people to the well. And um, we have our good friend Clemente, who is part of uh, our Wednesday morning group. Our, our Bible study, our community group, and he invited a friend of his uh, from years ago. And so, you know, Sal Medina, uh, everybody, he accepted the Lord. He, uh, you know, is a follower of Jesus now. He committed his life uh, to Jesus. And so praise God for that. You know, let's see some clapping hands or some raised emoji hands, you know, and Sal Medina, he sent me a an email and basically wanted to thank all of you. You know, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving because you give to the well church because you give, we're able to do what we get to do. And so this is what Sal said. This is his story. He said, I want to thank the well church for inviting me with open arms. I am, as I now call this my new home of worship. He said, my name is Sal Medina. And for the most, for most of my teen years and through my adulthood, I was heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol. Through the work of God, I have now been clean and sober for a little over six years now. Two years ago, my family suffered the loss of my brother in a car accident, and then two days after the loss of my father from a stroke. My faith was tested, and I was hit with so many emotions all at once that I shut down internally. You know, last year, I reconnected with a high school friend uh, to talk about business and after some time he invited me you know to join the wednesday bible study at the well church you know it's one of the best decisions i could have ever made you know the bible study you know group you know has renewed my faith in the lord um again and for the first time in my life i have opened up the bible listen to that everybody i have opened up the, the bible excited to learn you know the word of god I now know in my heart that God has always loved me and he has never given up on me, even at times when I gave up on him. Isn't that so good, right? And I can't thank you enough for walking with me through this new chapter in my life. So all of you, all of you, every single one of you that give generously to the Well Church, it is because of your generosity that we are able you know, to reach people with the good news of Jesus uh, and invite them into a loving relationship, you know, with him. Um, and so thank you for giving. Thank you for your generosity. Um, you know, whether you give by texting, you know, you can text to the well, text 77977 to the well of AV, and you'll get a link there and you can give. Or if you uh, go to our website, thewellofav.com, and, uh, you know, there's a button there that says give now. You can click on that and give. Or if you uh, want to mail your gift to the P.O. Box, it's the Well of AV, P.O. Box 902031, Palmdale, California, 93590. Amen? Yes, I see all those clapping hands and those raising hands. So, again, everyone, uh, you help me pray for the offering. And, again, thank you all, you know, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all of you, the Well Church, you know, all of our family. Thank you so much for, you know, giving because we are changing lives uh, you know, Jesus Christ is helping us change lives. So let's pray. God, thank you so much that we see, uh, that we've seen a new day today. You know, the old is gone, Lord, and the new is here. And that is also spiritually when someone comes to a loving relationship with you. 
Everything is erased in the past and we are made brand new. This is a new day filled with hope. And so God, thank you. Uh, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering, those that are giving generously, those that are giving uh, with, uh, with glad hearts. Lord, multiply this offering so that we can reach more of the Sal Medinas, you know, more uh, you know, people out there that are hurting, that are lost, that are struggling with anxiety, with brokenness. Uh, Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said amen. Hey, Chava, good morning. Welcome. You know, I got the Quadro family on Instagram. Welcome, welcome. Who else do I see here? Uh, you know, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Praise God for that. Yes. Um, so again, thank you for your generosity. Uh, we're, we're grateful to uh, do what we get to do, right? All right. Well, everybody, we are currently in a message series that, you know, I believe Okay, I really believe in my heart, in my mind, my soul. Uh, that's very, very important for a lot of people. And honestly, this message series is, is really important to me. And so the title of this message series is The United States of Anxiety. <laughs> and I named it that because with all the things, right, all the things that, that we can disagree on, I mean, there's one thing for sure, y'all, all y'all, that we can agree on and that is that we're all experiencing anxiety or we have experienced anxiety in the past right and so today i want to continue being transparent with every single one of you about my battle with anxiety the past 20 years almost 20 years and so today's message okay i hope you're taking notes and i hope you got pen and paper next to you because i'm going to give you some stuff um you know that's going to bless you and it's and i pray that the holy spirit opens up you know, uh, some new um, just wisdom, so encouragement for you today, okay? Uh, so today what I want to talk about is praying through the pain, okay? So I need you to share. I need you to, you know, like, to comment. I need you to be actively, you know, participating with me, all right? Because again, you know, this part of technology is, is a little weird until we get on Zoom live again soon, soon, okay? So let me ask you this. Has anybody ever experienced pain, Come on, let me see those hearts, let me see those likes, or let me see those, those uh, the sad faces, the crying faces, Instagram, you know, post uh, your comments on there. Uh, whether it's physical pain, whether it's been emotional pain, financial, wow, right? relational pain, I mean, we've all experienced pain. And I also, also want all of us to acknowledge, yes, I see those you know, comments coming in, I see those, those hearts, yes, yes. You know, I also wanna acknowledge everyone that oftentimes, hear me out, okay, don't miss this. The biggest battles that you and I will ever go through are battles that people never see, right? I mean, often the battles that we are facing, they're battles in our minds. Let me repeat that. Often the battles that we are facing, everyone, are the battles that are in between our ears, right here in the mind. And so I wanna come clean and just confess to all of you that there have been times where where I've acted, okay? And we're, we're good actors. And Michelle says, a gang of it. That's right, girl, a gang of it. You know, we, we're good actors, right? We're good actors. We act like nothing's going on. People ask you, hey, how's it going? And you just nonchalantly say, good, everything's good. Everything's good in my life, right? But secretly, secretly on the inside, I mean, we are hurting and we're struggling. And again, I can do a good job of looking really good on the outside, really good on the outside. Come on, everybody. You guys know what I'm talking about? But the truth of the matter is, man, I feel weak inside and, and I feel defeated. And I mean, I can put on the happy face. Look at this. Look at that. Smile, everybody. Come on. Smile with me. Let's fake it till we make it. No, no. <laughs> right. We can put on uh, this happy face, you know, and smile from ear to ear and say, you know, all the churchy things. Come on, church. We can say all the right churchy things. Oh, praise the Lord for he is good, right? Hashtag too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Come on. But the reality is we are worried. We feel overwhelmed. You know, we feel like no one's going to understand what we're going through. You know, some of you may feel fearful and, and insecure. And sometimes, you know, we don't even want to get out of bed, right? I, there's been times I didn't want to get out of bed. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to curl up here, you know, keep the blinds closed. Don't let the sun come in, lock the door, and I'm just going to sleep the rest of the day. Come on. 
Can anybody relate to that? Let's be let's be honest here. We're gonna confess our sins to one another here. We need some healing up in this up in this place, right? So here's my question: What do you do when you find yourself battling with anxiety? What do you do? Come on, think about that right now, or maybe write it down. What is it that you do? What are what is it that you go to? What do you reach for? Who do you call? Or you know, what are the the uh, coping mechanisms that you have? Well, our anchor text that is helping us go through this message series, you know, comes from the book of Philippians chapter four. So I hope you have your Bibles there. Uh, you know, we're, and it's Philippians chapter four, chapter uh, verses four through seven. And so I want to read it to you again, but I want you, I want to remind you that as we experience the, the, the power of God's word, okay, this morning, you need to remember, okay, let me put you back in the mind frame, the context, you know, this was written by the Apostle Paul, okay, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, you know, to his friends in a church in Philippi, right, as he was chained up, everybody, he was chained up to a Roman guard in prison, and he was waiting for his trial, right? Not knowing what the outcome was going to be, right? Sort of like us through this pandemic. Like, what's the outcome? What's going to happen? When are we going to feel like we're going back to normal? But we're not like the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, right? If anybody had the right to be anxious, I mean, it was this guy. It was Paul because of what he was going through. All right, so here are the words that that Paul penned. And they're, I believe they're filled with power, with life and truth. And this is what he said. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. And there's an exclamation point, right? Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Somebody need to say that. The Lord is near. All right? Don't be anxious, everybody, about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts your minds in Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen out there? Come on, let me see those amens. Yes, I see the hearts on Instagram. Come on, Facebook. I'm a Paul groupie. <laughs> Michelle, I love it. All right, so why don't we do this? Why don't we do exactly what the scripture says? Right now, literally where you're at, okay? Let's bring, let's present our requests to God, okay? Let's pray, let's pray. God, we pray for your peace. Lord, we bring you right now all of our angst, our worries, Lord, our fears, our insecurities. God, we we are broken, Lord. We are nothing without you, Lord Jesus. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, give us comfort. Give us peace that transcends all understanding. We know that you are near us, God, right now in our brokenness, in our worries, in our angst. Lord, we give this anxiety to you. Whatever we've been struggling with, God, we don't want to carry it anymore. We hand it to you. We put it at the foot of the cross. We, we pray for your peace in our hearts, in our minds, in Christ Jesus. Father, in, in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray right now that you remove all of that from us. We bind it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to loosen blessings, loosen peace and joy and love and, and, and faithfulness and goodness and the Lord self-control. We ask for all the fruits of the Spirit, patience, kindness, faithfulness. And we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen, church. All right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's give a praise to God right now. So what is anxiety, y'all? What is anxiety? Well, last week, if you remember, I defined it as, as something that is very unique, right? Every single one of you, you know, goes through something very unique and it's very complicated. Why? Why is that? Because anxiety, we talked about this, right? Can be physiological. It can be situational. It can even be emotional. You know, and we can for sure, listen to this, we can for sure say everybody that it is always spiritual. It is always spiritual because anxiety, it's, it's a very complicated thing, right? And so what we're going to do through this series is we're taking this holistic approach to it. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, it means that we're always going to pray. That is the number one thing. We're going to go to Jesus. We're going to go to God. But we're also going to seek 
professional help. It may be counseling, right? I talked about that last week. If you didn't catch the, the message last week, go to our YouTube channel, check it out, The Well of AV. And, and I've gone through counseling, right? And I still pursue counseling. Yeah, your pastor goes to counseling. How about that, right? And, and so some of you may need to seek a doctor to seek help medicinally or maybe change your diet. I can't tell you how impactful it is to change your diet, right? Eat healthier. And so for our sake today and always, because I'm a pastor and I'm your pastor, I'm going to help you focus on the spiritual side of things. Why? Because again, I don't have a PhD and you don't want me, trust me, you know, prescribing you any type of medicine, <laughs> right? But what I can do is offer you spiritual medicine. Come on, somebody, right? And and, that, and this can help you deal with your anxiety uh, and, you know, this, this spiritual battle that you're in, all right? Okay, so again, what is anxiety? Let me ask, let me, let me put it to you this way. Um, I thought about this and I go, have you ever set an alarm right, on your phone or on an actual clock next to your bed and you've got something very important the next day? I mean, that could be a job interview, uh, your first day, you know, at school, uh, you know, uh, an interview, a meeting, something, right? The alarm goes off and then you, you hit the snooze and you go back to bed and you go, okay, I got two minutes, five minutes, nine minutes, whatever it is. But then you, you sporadically or instinctively wake up and you go, oh no, man. And it's 20, 30 minutes past the time that you were supposed to wake up and you figure out that instead of hitting the snooze, you know, you hit the off button. That everyone to me is stress. That is stress. And so anxiety, okay, for, for this message, if I can relate it to something, it's, it's like the alarm. It's an alarm signaling that it's time for you to pray. So let me say it again. Anxiety is the signal, everyone, the sound that something is not right. And it would be wise for all of us to not to hit the snooze button on it. Come on. Like in other words, you can't ignore it. And, and it's also an indicator letting you know that it is time to reach out to Jesus in prayer. It's time to pray. Listen to me. If it's big enough to worry about, then it's big enough to pray about. Let me repeat that. If it's big enough for you to worry about it, then it's big enough for you to pray about it. Okay? Now, remember, the Bible says, right? The Apostle Paul said, do not be anxious about nothing, but in every situation, take your requests to God. Okay, so when I'm anxious, when I was anxious going to my doctor's appointments, I mean, even to go for the first time and see my counselor, what did I do? I prayed about it. Come on, everybody. And when I'm worried about a decision I have to make, I pray about it. When I'm worried about finding, you know, when I was praying about my soulmate, right? I prayed about it. Thank you, Jesus, for answering that. I love you, Jenna. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo, pray for your wives. If you're worried about your marriage currently, pray about it. If you're worried about your kids going back to school, right? Physical school, right? No more Zoom. And they got one or two days, they got to go back physically. Pray about it. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. If you're worried about how you're going to pay next month's rent, how your business is going to do, pray about it. Seek the Lord. Hear me out. Listen to this. If it's on your mind, then it is in God's heart. If it's on your mind, everyone, come on, church, then it's on God's heart. See, we need to take our requests to God. And can I be real honest with you all? When I first started praying, right, when I became a Christian and I was a, a baby follower of Jesus, just getting my, 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 my walk on with the Lord, learning how to hold his hand, how to be in a relationship with him. When I started to think about, now remember I'm saying think about praying because you know, I didn't know how to pray. You know, I thought there was like this, some kind of rules you had to follow. Come on, how do I start? How do I start praying? Uh, you know, do I say, do I call him Father God? You know, I hear people call him Heavenly Father. Or, or do I go like old school King James Version and say, oh, omnipotent being in the sky. <laughs> Come on, church. Don't leave me hanging. If you know what I'm talking about, you know, Michelle says, preach, brother. Come on, Michelle. You know, you're with me. Daniel, anxiety is an alarm for you to pray. Yes. Okay, so... <laughs> And then, and then it's the, not only the starting part is how do I end this, right? Do I have to say at the end, do I have to say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? I grew up Catholic. And so, you know, that's how we end in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, sign of the cross. And, you know, is the Lord going to deduct brownie points? 
or not answer <laughs> my prayer if I don't close my eyes? Like, it, do, is there a thing? Do I have to close my eyes? Can I pray with my eyes open? I mean, what do I do? And, and what if I start to pray? Or somebody's going to relate to this. What if I start to pray and I fall asleep? <laughs> You know, is, is God going to strike me down, right? To say, hey, wake up, fool. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> or is he going to put me on timeout and, and not answer my prayers for a week? Oh, man. Come on. Don't leave me hanging out here, everybody. Am I crazy and all alone on this? <laughs> or has anyone out there felt the same thing? What are the prayer rules? What are they? Well, I'm going to tell you this. You do. You do have to pray in the King James uh, language. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. Come on, everybody. Let's see those smiling faces, those hearts and likes. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, do you have to pray like this? Lord, how are they that are increased that trouble me? You know, many are they that rise up against me. <laughs> or many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah, selah. <laughs> or, or hear me, O Heavenly Father, when I call, O God, of my righteousness. <laughs> Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear thy prayer. Wow, look at that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. You know what he wants? I know I'm joking around, but just simply speak just talk to him he wants to hear from you look I, I know that that praying can be intimidating right especially if you're around people right that sound more holier than thou you know I, I remember you know being around a pastor this is like in my first ministerial job and and, and this dude was a prayer ninja <laughs> Right. I mean, it's just like, I mean, this guy, I mean, whenever, I mean, we as pastors, and this is within the church, y'all. Okay. When we're all together gathered for like a meeting or we went to lunch together, I mean, we would look at each other. I'm talking about pastors, look at each other, but look at this prayer ninja pastor and be like, uh, we're going to let him pray. <laughs> we're going to let him lead in prayer. I mean, we all felt like God was upstairs looking down, smiling from ear to ear and just saying, now that's how you pray. <laughs> right we all felt like god was upstairs just smiling ear to ear and just saying you know now that's how you pray and, and for my prayers it was like oh juan you need help right god was looking down and you, you suck <laughs> you need a little bit of help okay so but god doesn't do that right he's not up there measuring how our prayers are giving us an a b c or d or an f or it's it's not like that so how do we pray then pastor glad you asked Listen again to what the scripture says. Paul gives us a path. He said, everyone, pray about everything. See, God cares. Hear me out, Instagram, Facebook. Come on, the well church. God cares about every detail in your life. See, then he said, present your request to God. In other words, if I can translate this into layman terms, right? How I would understand it, right? I mean, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in Pacoima. Shout out to... You know, San Fernando Valley, Pacoima. <laughs> Just let your needs be known. That's what that means. Let your needs be known. And how do we do that? You ready? Okay, I hope you're writing this down. Hope you're writing this down. You talk to God. Just the way that you talk. So in other words, it doesn't have to be in code. It doesn't have to be in the King James Version, right? Translation. Uh, it doesn't have to be formal or, or the way that prayer ninjas do it. I mean, it's just in your own way. And so, you know, I thought this morning, you know, I'd give you an example. You know, I, I have six beautiful kids. Praise God for them. And, and which I love them with all my heart. And all of my kids, I mean, let me just let you know, they, they let me know their needs in their own unique ways. They all have different creative ways to let me know, you know, what their needs are. And, and so here, let me check this out. Look at this gorgeous, look at this handsome dude. You know, that's my son. Can you guys see that? All right, this is my son, Anthony. You know, he'll be 22. I mean, literally coming up uh, in a couple days, in seven days. And so my oldest, you know, he, he, he kind of has a conversation first, like with his mom to kind of straighten out what he wants to ask for. You know, he gets direction. And then he, and then he comes to me. He gets, he gets approval. All right, and he's like, hey, dad. That's how he starts his conversation. Hey, dad. 
That's it. And then I have my gorgeous daughter. This is Amber. Uh, she just turned 18. You guys see that? All right, I put her nice and close. You know, she graduated from Golden Valley High School. Um, you know, my daughter, Amber, you know, she text messages me. She's a text messenger. You know, it usually starts, hey, dad. And then she she's very emotional, you know, uh, to her message. You know, she writes emojis and, you know, she's really in tune with her emotions, but she asks. Okay, so that's that's my daughter, Amber. You know, she, she uses emotion. And then I have Cheyenne. Look at that. She's into the, the blue hair right now. You know, at least she has hair, right? This is my beautiful daughter, gorgeous daughter, Cheyenne. Uh, she's in high school, finishing her senior year. Cheyenne is exactly that, shy. You know, she she doesn't know how to ask, but she asks in a roundabout way, but she finally gets to asking. Um, and she she's shy when she asks, but she, she asks, right? And then I have Caleb, who's 11. He's a baseball player, uh, very athletic. And, you know, Caleb, he likes to beat around the bush. He's the complete opposite of his youngest brother, <laughs> Camilo, and I'll just show you a picture of him. And he, he almost asked like, hey, dad, if you can, you know, I mean, I don't want to bother you, you know, he, but he waits until the last minute. He's a last minute kind of person to make his request. And he needs to be touching me. You know, he comes and gives me a hug, you know, and that's just Caleb. That's who he is. And then we have this little guy. He just turned six, Camilo. He's a golfer, you know. He's athletic also, he's, uh, you know, he's awesome. And, uh, you know, he's very direct. This little guy right here, he's direct, he's assertive, and man, he is persistent. He, you know, he, he's, I mean, he doesn't understand the word no. He doesn't know what, what no means. Uh, it doesn't, the word doesn't exist in, in, in the dictionary. And, and sometimes he can come off as being rude, but that's just because he knows what he wants and he's aggressive, right? And then we have our little angel. And then we have Ava. Ava is going to be five coming up in uh, July. No, June. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, July. 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 See what happens? We got six kids. <laughs> All right, so this is little Ava. And uh, she's our baby. And I just want to confess here. And I know Jenna's watching. <laughs> I mean, she can ask for whatever she wants. You know, she's the princess of the house. <laughs> she can never ask for too much or too little. <laughs> you know, she calls me daddy bear. You know, and, and whatever request she has, you know, she, she, as long as she calls me daddy bear, it's like, yes and amen, right? <laughs> so here's my point. All of them, right, they all have different ways to ask, and they all call me something different. They are all unique, and they're all creative, and that's how you can talk to God. You can ask him. You can sing to him. You can write your prayer request to him, journal it. You can shout with joy or anger, and trust me, God can handle your temper tantrum. God can handle it. And, and, and I love, man, I mean, I love, here's, don't miss this, I love when my children need me, right? When, when they search for me and, and ask me for anything. And God, your heavenly father, your heavenly father loves you, you know, loves for you to need him. And loves for you to go to him and let your needs be known to him. Again, the scripture says, in every situation, listen to me. You know, Jeff, you know, the Quadra family on here, Kara, Ernie, Eleanor, uh, you know, everybody's on here. David, you know, Tommy, Daniel, uh, Michelle, who else is on here? I mean, everybody's on here. Jenna, I mean, everybody that's, you know, on Facebook and Instagram church, listen to me. God wants to know your request. He wants for you to seek him. George, what's up, man? He wants you, good, bad, or indifferent, for you to seek him. So, so again, what is anxiety, everyone? It is an alarm alerting you to go to the one, to go to the one who loves you, to go to the one that can help you, to go to the one who created you. Anxiety, it's the alarm that's going off and telling you it is time to pray come on let's see those praying hands out there put those emojis out there it is time to pray see peter i love peter as well the apostle peter he's another person that we see in the bible you know that probably struggled with anxiety as well and this is what he he said we should do he said humble yourselves humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand don't miss that okay humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand 
that he may lift you up in due time, church, that he will lift you up in due time. And it's, he said, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So what do we need to do? Again, the, the plan, the a, plan of execution is in the Bible. It says we need to humble ourselves and pray. And don't miss this, please, okay? Listen to me, okay? Pay attention, come on, come on. This is what I've been doing more often than ever before, right? Through the, through the pandemic, through, we're still going through it. And if you were here last week, I mean, I got very vulnerable and I talked about my, my struggle with anxiety. Let me tell you, I've been battling anxiety for 19 years and I've gotten help. First and foremost, I've gotten help from God. I've gotten help from counseling, right? I've gotten help from my doctor. And, and now, you know, I'm, I'm sharing this with you right now. I mean, not to complain or to make you feel bad for me or anything like that, because, you know, I know, listen, I know that every single one of you, you know, you're also dealing with your own stuff, right? And my stuff, look, it's not greater than yours. It's just different. But bear with me, okay? And come along with the journey for a few minutes. Right now, I need you to know that every week, you know, I have to come up with a message for you, right? And it's a blessing. It's encouraging. And I wanted to help you grow closer to God. But it's not easy, everyone. It's not easy. It's, it takes a lot of creativity, why? Well, I mean, think of it this way. You're probably thinking, why does it take a lot of creativity? Well, the Bible never changes, <laughs> right? The stories are the same from the beginning to the end every single year, right? It's God parts the sea for the Israelites, right? To help them, you know, uh, to help them and, uh, you know, bless them, keep them away from Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh gets swallowed up by the sea and, and Jesus is born from a virgin on Christmas and he is raised on the third day on Easter, you guys get what I'm saying? I mean, I, I can't change these stories. They're the same stories. So the creativity, right? I, I have to teach them differently. So I don't bore you. So you don't click off of Instagram or, or Facebook and go somewhere else. <laughs> and, and I don't want to do that, right? So, you know, I, I already, I don't want you to go, well, I already heard this one, Pastor. I mean, let's, let's move on. Let me go listen to someone else. And so there's a lot of pressure and, and it takes a lot of time and energy that goes into writing a sermon, right? I have to read the text, I have to do research, you know, make sure that the message reaches every single uh, uh, generation, right? From the, for the baby boomer, the Gen Xer, the Gen Y, the millennial, the Gen Z, to the XYZ, to the ABC, like everybody. And, and so I gotta tell stories, I have to internalize it, personalize it, and then finalize the message. And this can take one to two days, sometimes three days, where I'm literally in this office, checking out those books, getting in the Bible, doing research. And I want to tell you, contrary to the popular belief, pastors, I mean, we do way more than just preach on Sunday. <laughs> Again, we do, right? So let me give you a little synopsis, a little, right? I mean, I have meetings right now during the week, three, four hours per week with uh, Viral Solutions which again, thank you to all of you that give. Uh, we're able to you know, uh, reach people on the internet. We're investing you know, on our tech technology in the background, uh, Google, AdWords, all this different stuff, TikTok, Instagram, I mean, all these different things that we're expanding the well church to reach more people. You know, I also prepare a message for Wednesday, uh, you know, midweek service. You know, we have our Bible study on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. You know, also uh, prepare and record our podcast with my good friend Clemente. If you guys haven't checked out the podcast, it's called The Source. It's on all the mediums out there. Uh, that's on every Thursday, Friday afternoons. Uh, you know, an elder and member of, the, of our church, you know, uh, helped me start a Bible study at his place, at his location of business. Anyway, sometimes just in order to keep up, I have to wake up super early or work after you know, we put our kids to bed and we pray with them. And that cuts into, everybody, come on, that cuts into the quality time with Mama Bear, with my wife. And, and she ain't that happy sometimes, let me tell you. <laughs> right? And, and, and so that's not good. And all of that can cause anxiety, right? It could be too much, right? Not having enough time. And so as I talk about this, think about you, right? What is it that you do? And again, so let me tell you how I'm dealing with it. I, like many of you, you know, I'm a tither. Thank you, Tanisha. Oh, she's a sweetheart. She said you're anointed and appointed. Amen to that. Praise Jesus. 
And so, you know, I'm a tither, right? Our family, we're tithers. And it's a spiritual discipline that, that we've picked up. You know, my wife and I believe with all of our hearts that, that God owns everything. And, and everything that God gives us, the first tenth, again, the tithe, the first tenth, you know, we give it to him. And so I thought, you know, if I worship him with the first 10% of everything that he gives me, you know, the Bible says this, the Bible, not me, says that he blesses the rest, the 90%, and pours blessings to me of provision. And this is not just monetarily, everybody, but in all sorts of ways. So, so the last almost 10 years of our marriage, you know, we, we have believed that if we gave, we gave 10% of everything that we have, then God would bless the rest. You know, I heard Pastor Craig, you know, Rochelle, you know, he, he taught on this exact principle. And so it's not an original thing that I came up with, but, you know, I also want people to, you know, bless me and pour into me. And so I, you know, he said that he applied this principle of tithing to his preaching and his teaching time. And I was like, what does that mean? And so what he said is that, that he didn't have time, listen to this, to spend a lot of time in prayer. And so we're talking about praying through the pain, right? And so many of you can relate to that. You know, your alarm goes off in the morning, boom, you're off to the races, you're off to your to-do list, meeting after meeting, and every minute of your day counts, right? And no, no minutes can be wasted. Anyways, what he said is that he is now, listen to this, tithing time in prayer. Okay, so go for go deeper, Pastor. What does that mean? When he's when he knows he looks at his schedule and he's got to work long hours, you know what he does? He prays longer. And whenever he feels like he doesn't have the time, enough time in the day, right? He's believing that if he prepares his heart in prayer that God will prepare the message. Come on, you need to put some hearts and likes out there. That was good. If if I if we prepare our hearts, then God will prepare your day. In other words, you'll have more time. And so, you know, I thought to myself, man, what a shift. Yes, yes, Alex. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for always praying. And so I thought to myself, man, what a shift, everyone, in perspective, right? Whenever you feel that you don't have time, invest the time in prayer. And God, who said, bring your request to me, will help you. He will take care of the day. You see, if we invest more time in prayer, what we're saying, church, instead of working harder and attacking the day and, and, and waking up earlier or going to sleep later, we're saying, I'm going to believe more in you. Let, write this phrase down. Rather than pushing my way through it, I'm going to pray my way through it. Come on. Somebody put that in the comments. Rather than pushing my way through it, write that down. I'm going to pray my way through it. Thank you, David. Thanks for posting that. Yes, that is good. Okay. See, we need to tithe our time also and trust that God is going to be our provision. Look. I don't know how this applies to you, but you need to remember that whenever you have anxiety. See, it is an alarm. Come on, everybody. It's an alarm letting you know that it is time to go to the one who cares about you. It is time to seek God in prayer. So remember our scripture, right? Peter said, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. God's hand will lift you up. I and mean, what a beautiful picture. Don't you guys think? Now, think about that. If you recall, everybody, come on, church, Peter, who was writing this, I mean, he was the one who was in the boat. He was in the boat with the other disciples. And what did he do? He was the one that was brave enough. He had the courage to get out of the boat and walked toward Jesus on water. And while he walked on water, he saw the wind, right? He took his eyes off of Jesus. He saw the wind, the anxiety, right? The stress, you know, the financial crisis, the marriage, right? Whatever you're going through, right? Whatever that crisis is for you, taking our eyes off of Jesus, all of a sudden what happens? The anxiety took over Peter because he took his eyes off of Jesus and Peter began to sink. 
And what did Jesus do, everybody? Come on, what did he do? I mean, did he shame him? Did he say, oh, you're awful, you're a bad follower? No, right? Jesus reached out his hand and he lifted Peter up in due time. His mighty hand reached out, everybody, and pulled up Peter. So humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. See, when do we do that? When you go before God in prayer. So if you're sinking, perhaps the problem isn't that you're sinking right now. The problem is that, that you're not reaching out to grab his hand, which is right there. It's right there, ready to grab a hold of you. You see, if you reach out to him, he will in due time lift you up. And so in a few moments, as I wrap this up, we're going to wrap this up right now. I want to ask all of you to lift your hands right where you're at, like this, okay, like this, open. And so before I do that, I want to ask you a question. What does lifted hands mean, everybody? Come on, type it in the comments. When someone lifts their hands, what does that mean? Type it in the comments. What do you think it means? Let's see it. When someone lifts their hands up, what does it mean? Yeah, somebody posted, yeah, it means victory. Yeah, somebody wins, right? They lift their hands. They're like, yeah, victory, victory. Surrender, yeah. It means victory or surrender. Yes, Kara, absolutely. It means surrender, yeah. It means also victory though, right? You see, I believe that the minute, hear me out, church, the minute that we lift our hands up, to Jesus, it means both things at the same time. Tanisha, Jenna, right, Daniel, all of you. It means both things at the same time. See, at that very moment that we surrender, we also experience everybody victory in and through Christ Jesus. That God is with us, that he cares for us. He is comforting us. He is strengthening us. So listen to me, church. If you're battling with anxiety, Okay, he's there for you. Okay, but we have to be aware of a cycle. I'm gonna go through this real quick. See, the cycle begins with number one, feeling anxious. Okay, that's the alarm going off. The weight on your shoulders, the worried, can't sleep at night, right? Those are the signs. And then what do we do? We try to do what we can do and we attempt to control. That is number two. That is, that is number two. This is the cycle. One, we feel anxious. Then we go to control mode, right? I'll make this happen. I'll fix the problem. But the more we try to control things, the third part of the cycle kicks in and we begin to fear losing control. We begin fearing losing control. And then and the more we fear losing control, the more we try to control. <laughs> and then that's number four, we attempt to control again. And what does that do? That vicious cycle keeps us more angst, more angst, more anxiety, more worry, more stress. But what do we need to do? We need to break the cycle. And how do we do that? We need to embrace God's truth and recognize that we don't have any control or the power to fix everyone or to fix anyone. Somebody need to hear that again. You can't fix everyone and you can't fix anyone, right? We can't fix people or things, but we can, everybody, come on, as a sign of, of, of surrender and victory, we can surrender. Raise your hands, you see? Here's what I do know. Medicine won't always fix it. Counseling won't always fix it. Changing our circumstances won't always fix it. But we can surrender everything to God, to our God, to Jesus. Right? We can take anything to him. Doesn't matter the size of it. He wants to lift us up in due time. Okay. So right now. I want all of you to prepare, put stuff down, right? Unless you have an iPad, you know, put it against the wall, whatever you need to do. And right now we're going to prepare to make, you know, make all of our needs known to God. This is how we're going to wrap up this message today. I want you to present your request to God. Okay. We're going to humble ourselves before him. Listen, I need help. I'm telling you, I need help. And I hope you can admit the same, right? Anybody else out there with me? Let's see those hearts and likes. Come on. If you need help, say, Hearts and likes out there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to humble ourselves before God, united here under his mighty hand with expectant hearts, everyone. And we can trust that he's going to lift us up in due time. 
right? We're going to go ahead and cast all of our anxieties on him because he cares for us right now. Okay, so I want you, everybody on Instagram, come on, church, everybody on Facebook, I want you to release, to throw, okay, that Greek word, to cast, to let go of everything, right? Whatever burden you have, whatever's weighing you down, right? Your children, the bills, uh, uh, you know, this pandemic, uh, your relationships, whatever you're anxious about, the future, your health, your, um, your marriage, your relationship, uh, your aging parents, if you're dealing with that. Uh, if you're worrying too much about what others think about you, um, it, 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 all this, okay? Maybe you don't feel like you're good enough, that you can't make up, you know, keep up with the demands of everyone else. Remember that anxiety, everybody, again, is alerting you that it is time to pray. So right now as a church, we're going to pray as a church family. Please don't be shy. I want you to push yourself out of your comfort zone. I want to invite you to release everything right now, okay? So lift your hands and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we humbly come before you, Lord. We cry out to you with all of our being, with all of our heart, Jesus. God, we come to you brokenhearted and crushed in spirit, crying out to you, oh God. We come to you overwhelmed, drained of strength, with our despair, with our shattered dreams, goals that have been unmet, admitting, Heavenly Father, that, that we are weak, that, Lord, this is too much to handle sometimes. You know, we are giving it to you, Lord. You know, some of us, we're struggling with grief, Lord. We've lost people. We lost loved ones, and we miss them. Some of us, Lord, we're worried about our finances, our businesses. You know, some of us, you know, we're struggling with loneliness. You know, this pandemic has isolated us and we miss friends and family. We miss loved ones. Some of us, you know, we're grieving because our former world, God, that we lived in is gone. And so much change has occurred and it's thrusted us into a new world. And so, Lord, we're acknowledging, I'm acknowledging you. We're acknowledging you, Heavenly Father, as the only one who can take all this off our shoulders. I'm trusting you to hold me, God, to love me, to fix me. I'm relying on your strength, Jesus, as I stop pretending that everything is okay, that I put on this front, this fake mask that i've got everything under control you know my weakness is no surprise to you anyway heavenly father here it is here it is god i i give it to you right now at your feet i present it to you lord i give you my doubts my fears my worries my anxiousness my grief we know that nothing can hinder your plans Nothing can hinder your love, and you will never fail. You will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you hear us. And even sometimes when we don't get the result that we want, that, that we still are going to continue to trust in you, God. We worship you and praise you, King Jesus. We give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the glory this morning. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the church said, amen, amen. Come on, give him praise, everybody. In Palmdale, give him praise. In Lancaster, give him praise. In Acton, give him praise. If you're in Newberry Park, give him praise. If you're in La Crescenta, Valencia, Chula Vista, San Diego, in Mission, in Michigan, in National City, in Pinion Hills, in Pacoima, in Reseda, give him praise. Give him all the glory. Come on, church. Let's see those hearts and likes. Let's give Jesus a praise this morning. Amen, amen, amen. So today, as I wrap up, we talked about Jesus. And, and so who is Jesus? Well, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God, incarnate, all divine power. And Jesus came to save sinners like you and me. Jesus came and he offered us eternal life. And you, you are invited 
to begin living a, a personal relationship with him. And, and although everybody, we must grow old and, and, and live this life that's broken, Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, he offers us a new life today. The Bible says that those that put their faith in Jesus, they have a new life. They get a new lease on life, no matter what brokenness, no matter how you've distrusted, no matter what you've done. We see murderers. We see uh, people that turn their backs on. We see all kinds of people that have fallen short of the glory of God find new life in Christ Jesus. And this new life lasts forever, not just now while we're alive and we're awake in this life, but it continues to the next life. So we believe in his life. We believe in his words and his death and, and his resurrection that we are cleansed and, and we receive the power to follow him through the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus. But we must respond by believing. You know, the Bible says that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. That is Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Jesus himself told everyone, he said in John 14, 6, I am the way. There's only one way. I am the truth. There's only his truth. I am the life. He said, no one goes to the Father except through me. So I want to invite you right now where you're at, Instagram family, Facebook, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have the forgiveness of your sins so that you can have eternal life with him and so that he can, he can bring you with his mighty hand up from the stress, the angst, and more importantly, from a separated life from him in eternity where you can be reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ then pray with me right now and say, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me, to pay a gruesome death, and with his death to pay the penalty of my sins. I ask you for forgiveness. And I believe that Jesus rode on, rose on the third day and he is seated now at your right hand, Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior for the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. Let's see those hearts and likes. Come on, everybody. Let's invite that person that came and accepted Jesus Christ. You are part of the, the family of God now. We want to come alongside you. I need you to know that that, that Jesus is real, that he is alive, and he can help you. And, and, and we, we're a church family together that are here for you. Please reach out. Let us know in the comments. Say yes. I said yes to Jesus in the comments if you said yes. And we want to reach out to you. Reach out to us or fill out the connection card and say, I said yes to Jesus. We want to put a Bible in your hand, and we want to invite you into our community. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here this morning. Share this message if it's blessed you. Remember, rejoice in the Lord for he is near. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Have a great uh, rest of the weekend and a great week. Love you. Talk to you later. Love you guys. We'll see you later.